Welcome, everybody. My name is Frank Lance, and I will be your host for Super Panel Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. So, welcome to that. I, um, thank you. You know, I think the, uh, the people who put together uh, Indicate East this year have done an incredibly good job of reaching out to uh, new voices and getting a fresh perspective uh, on, on indie games. Um, really uh, going out of their way to seek out people um, who you haven't heard from a million times. Uh, and um, in the spirit of inclusiveness, they thought, hey, how about we put together a little event with people that you have heard from a million times, right? <laughs> Some of the older voices. Maybe they're a little more tired, right? Maybe they're a little more familiar. Uh, voices like mine. Um, <laughs> and, um, and they also thought, you know what's the worst thing in the world? Panels, right? Panels are the lowest form <laughs> of conference entertainment. So let's do a panel. We'll do a panel with some older, tired, or more familiar voices. Uh, and we'll do it in a kind of a game show format. So, um, so that's what we're here to do. It's a, it's a quiz show. Uh, in a second, I'm going to introduce our panelists. Uh, we're going to uh, ask them a series of questions that we crowdsourced from the, uh, from the people uh, at Indicate and the people in this very room. Uh, and we're going to give them points and we're going to have winners and losers because it's a game and that's how games work. <laughs> All right. um, so uh, with, with no further ado, um, I would like to bring up our contestants. Um, I ask the contestants, please do not press your buzzer until I ask you to. Uh, and then at the end, we'll, uh, we'll get a chance to, to hit our buzzers. So um, uh, she has been referred to as someone with a terrifying intelligence. She's a, she's a designer and a, an educator. Uh, please welcome Naomi Clark. Um, the, uh, the New York Times referred to him as uh, the Howard Rourke of game design. I also don't know what that means. Please welcome Zach Gage, ladies and gentlemen. Um, she, uh, she teaches at uh, Parsons. She's collaborated with almost everyone involved on the panel. And she's also the best dressed person in the New York game design scene. Please welcome Colleen Macklin. <laughs> Some people refer to him as the drunken master of game design, the guy that you don't expect to be able to beat you, and he <coughs> continues to beat you. Uh, from NYU Game Center and everywhere else, Eric Zimmerman. Yeah. Um, this man is a uh, creator, an entrepreneur. He teaches at USC, and he's a festival director of Indiecade, which means we basically had to have him on the panel. Please join me in welcoming Sam Roberts, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. And finally, uh, one half of the, of the young geniuses that created uh, the, the, the beautiful shambles that is Baby Castle, Syed Salahuddin, please come up. Thank you. Okay, so now, this is, uh, this is uh, going to be how it works. Uh, first of all, we decided that no matter what kind of game you're designing, there's one piece of technology that is essential, and that's Twitter. So we <laughs> used Twitter and the power of social media. Raise your hand if you know. Who knows what social media is? So we, we used Twitter to crowd, what's doing crowdsource uh, questions, which is when you get other people to do your job for you. And so we've, we've, been, we've been collecting questions. We put together a, a set of amazing questions. Uh, they, we're going to ask uh, the questions. The, the panelists are, are going to buzz in, and they're going to give answers answers. I'm going to be the arbiter of which answers are correct. I'm going to be handing out uh, points for correct answers and uh, negative points for, for incorrect answers. Mm. And, uh, and then uh, my esteemed uh, colleagues, uh, uh, Margaret and Kevin, are going to be the scorekeepers. And at the end, we're going to reveal uh, in a very dramatic and exciting fashion uh, the, the winners and losers. So um, I, I think we should uh, start by, uh, first of all, uh, hearing the buzzer. So each one of you, when you want to answer, you're going to buzz in, and we've s carefully selected buzzers that we feel best express the sort of inner quality uh, of each contestant. So why don't we begin with Naomi, please buzz in. Okay, so that's Naomi. Uh, Zach Gage. Okay. Colleen Macklin. Oh, very nice. Uh, Eric Zimmerman. Ooh, very good. Sam Roberts. And Syed Salud. Very good. Okay. So, um, yes, thank you very much. One uh, minus one point for Syed. 
<laughs> overusing of the buzzer. Okay. So, uh, okay, quite, let's just jump right into it. Um, so as I said, we, we crowdsource these questions. I think it's an indication of how successful and popular uh, social media is that we got so many good questions <laughs> that not a single one of these came from the same person. So each one of these <laughs> came from a unique person. I just think that's a great indication of how, of how well this worked out. So we're, let's start with uh, Ilya Zambreski, who sent in the question number one. True or false, fuck polish. I should, pol I should apologize, first of all, if there are any children in the audience. <laughs> but we decided to go ahead and uh, start blue. And, uh, ah, yeah, Sam. I prefer to make sweet love to polish, Frank. Oh. Ooh. Anyone want to wanna chime in? Anyone want to challenge? Yeah, say it. Uh, uh, fuck polish. Okay. So a simple yes answer. That's also good. Anyone else? Let's hear it. I didn't hear your buzzer. Minus one for Naomi. Misuse <laughs> of buzzer. Yeah, I'll go for the serious answer and say polish is something you use when you're putting a car or furniture on eBay and you and want to you know, show it off for sale. So only if you're selling games on eBay. Ah. Colleen? I would say fuck yeah, polish. Oh, an enthusiastic yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say five points to Colleen on that yeah. question. <laughs> Nicely done. All right. Uh, question number two comes from Michael Suen. And the question is, what is the Tetris of movies? <laughs> I believe uh, Naomi attempted to buzz in. So negative one again for Naomi. Or again, inability to use the buzzer. But we're going to go ahead and, and let Naomi answer first. Eyes wide shut. I'm sorry, what? Oh. Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. Oh, oh. Very interesting. Um, Anyone else want to jump in on this one? Sam? Or Eric? Eric. <laughs> THX 1138. Oh. Mm. Oh. Yes? Oh, yours is Syed. <laughs> um, uh, naked Lunch. Oh. You want to explain the, that one? The movie oh. version. Oh, Naked Lunch. The movie is, yes. Yeah, it was. Why is that the Tetris of it? The other ones are a little more well, obvious. Let's give it a little backup for that well, one. Well, because, uh, you know, it's based off of the Burroughs novel that's a cut up, and it's just like the Burroughs novel. It's just completely, you know, nonlinear and, and, and a mess. And Very nice. So. All right. Just like Tetris. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Sam? <laughs> Uh, I, I think the Tetris of movies is probably Christmas Vacation because I can still talk with my parents about it. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah. if, any final uh, entries? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I would say um, The Cube Ooh. because cubes. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, huh. You're playing to the judge. <laughs> <laughs> That's Frank loves that. Frank I masturbates know. to The Cube. <laughs> Eric, please, and there Tetris, are children I heard. The Tetris. <laughs> Um, you know, I, yeah, you don't want to know what he point, does to Cube 2 Hypercube. It's <laughs> yeah. unwatchable. I mean, maybe yeah, there's some polish cube, involved. Yeah, in we call that Cube 2 stu <laughs> Stupid Cube. The Cube fans <laughs> refer to Cube 2 as Stupid Cube. Um, I still haven't heard an answer that I think is a great... I, like, I, I think Sam's closest because Tetris has that kind of universal <laughs> appeal. Everyone's familiar <laughs> with it. Is there anyone else that wants to hazard a guess? No one? Anyone? <laughs> Zach, how about you? Oh, you no, like mine's actually bad. I was going to say pie. Kind of pie. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hearing that like <laughs> some people are getting at the kind of aesthetic qualities, the, you know, but, but, but uh, Sam's is getting closest to this kind of like the way Tetris is an icon. It has this universal appeal. E.T. No. All right. I'm going to give that to, to Eric. So oh. let's give Eric. <laughs> let's say three points for the correct answer and, and minus two points for pandering to the judge. <laughs> <laughs> Net it out at a point. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'd like to give everyone else minus one on that question. <laughs> so one for Eric, minus one for everyone else. Yeah, they are. All right, our next question comes from Mark Hagen, who says, I'm thinking of a word, me, Frank. I'm thinking of a word, closest answer wins the points. <laughs> Sam. Pie. Anyone else? <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a hint. So far, Sam is the closest. <laughs> Netrunner? Oh. I'm sorry, this one's a Netrunner? Where am I? Okay, uh, that's pretty good. I, I'm trying to do a, a pandering combo. Ooh, very nice. Point for Eric. Pandering. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? 
be amazing if someone got it. Um, cake. Ooh. Cake. Okay. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Blowjob. <laughs> wow. That's two words. Uh, That's two, two words. Two points for Naomi. <laughs> and Ooh. the word was albatross. <laughs> I'm going to say Netrunner is the closest, so one point for Eric. All right. Whoa. Nice. Okay. Just quit. I think my head. Our next question comes from Robert Yang. And Robert asks, whose side is Ian Bogost on anyway? Who's, whose side is Ian Bogost on anyway? Whose side is Ian Bogost on anyway? Yes. No, no, by no. the way, could we just do a quick buzzer check? Could everyone, before Naomi has, does everyone just, let's go down the, Naomi, go ahead and hit your buzzer. And, yes, okay. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> Naomi, try one more time. Thank you. And, what was the question? I, I forgot. Forget, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> Whose side is Ian Bogust on anyway? Trick question, no one knows the answer to this question. <laughs> Kind of a dodge, yes. Uh, I don't. I don't think he's on anyone's side. Ian is the closest to chaotic neutral alignment I've ever seen. <laughs> if he's chaotic neutral, the answer would be his own. But the actual answer is not yours, whoever you are. <laughs> not yeah. yours. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I would like to. Yeah. Uh, Colleen, what Sam please. said. Yes. What Sam said. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that makes sense. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, what? One <laughs> minus one for Eric. Late buzz. It's a late buzz, Eric. Trying to buzz in. It's a late buzz. Okay. One point. One point for Zach. Five points for Sam. Uh, two points for Colleen yeah. for glomming on. <laughs> and minus one for Eric for a late buzz. All right. Did I already do that? So it's minus two. Um, our next question comes from Hillary O'Shaughnessy, who asks. How will video games be useful in an apocalypse with no power? Mm. So it's an apocalyptic type situation. Like you might find in a video game. There's no power. Yes. Yeah. I, I would say um, training before the power goes out. <coughs> okay. So it's uh, for, for training yeah. for such a situation. Future apocalyptic situations. Well, that seems reasonable. I have heard yes. Yes, go ahead. Uh, drink coaster. Drink coasters. Uh, no. Uh, I think you're living in the past. It does seem a little dated. <laughs> Did seem a little, I was like, what? Oh, right, the discs. Like Dad used to play, yeah. Uh, valuable consumable minerals to sustain human life. Okay, so you could eat them. Break up those computer chips, Frank. There's silicon in there. Silicon in there, yes. I think the cloth maps might be more accurate. Mm. Cloth mats. Yeah, cloth maps. Oh, cloth maps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the user guides could be used as uh, kindling for fire. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was just thinking cables for jump rope or for tying up your enemies so you can subdue them without killing them. Huh. Which I learned from video games. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a kind of double use there. So the cables. The cables, right. Which are part of video <laughs> games. Video game. Cables that come with video games? Yeah. <laughs> like a, vi oh, a video game, like, like the Wii. Or a PlayStation. Okay. Um, I'm going to say... connect to the TVs, too. Does anyone else have, a, a, have any ideas? Uh, yeah. Uh, shredding for insulation. Okay. Um, I like the cloth maps answer, which I'm going to say is worth seven. Whoa. Whoa, nice. Then I like the burning the, uh, the, the manuals, because that's such a vivid image. I think that's good. So let's make that worth 6.5. It's not quite as good as class maps. Uh, then let's give everyone else two points. Woo. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, our next question uh, comes from Mike Higgins, uh, who is a, a dentist from Nebraska and a proud father of three. A totally unique individual, not a fictional person at all. <laughs> Mike asks, uh, name a game you can definitely beat all of the other panelists at. Who would like to hazard a guess on this one? Quantum? <laughs> oh. Wow. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could take you guys at Spelunky. 
Super Panel Fighter 2 <laughs> HD edition. Okay. <laughs> yes. Quantum? <laughs> Going in a different direction, Pinochle. Pinochle, okay. <laughs> Drop seven, is that the right Oh, answer? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so let's do two pander points for that last uh, answer. Uh, then I would like to um, give Eric a point for, for his answer, quantum. Uh, Naomi, a negative one point. I really don't think she could beat Eric at quantum. And I, then I, would I, I have beat Eric at quantum. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah, we were, we were. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the clarification. I apologize. I'm only one, I'm, I'm human and I make mistakes. Yeah. All right. Play so, testing the losing condition. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is apparently, uh, you know, play against Naomi. So, uh, so Naomi gets one point and Eric gets negative one point oh. for the quantum answer. Nice. And, uh, and then I would like to do a, so here's a, we're going to try to get into a kind of, uh, more complex scoring business here. I hope that we have the technology to handle this. So, so <laughs> Colleen gets a hundred points <laughs> if yeah. she is in fact correct and ends up winning. <laughs> okay. All, right. All right. And if she, if she gets negative a hundred points, if she ends up losing. Is yes. Low. Okay. High stakes. Does that make it. sense? So, all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our next question comes from Jordan uh, Palethorpe. And uh, Jordan asks, what's the difference between Gone Home and Dear Esther? The difference between Gone Home and Dear Esther. Sam. One game happens primarily indoors, the other outdoors. Mm. Sensible? That seems like a good answer. British accents. Mm. Um, the 90s. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Is that an answer? I don't even know. Um, expectation of suicide versus no expectation of suicide. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are. That's a very long buzzer. There are things in Gone Home. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's true. Sure. That's true. Why not? <laughs> We're all friends here. We got the big guns. <laughs> Um, how about a bravery point for Zach for that, that <laughs> slightly cutting remark? <laughs> Anyone else? I forget the answers. I, I, you know, my mind's a million miles away. I have no idea. What do you guys think? What, what, who, who gave the best answer there? I'd like, I like, to, I'd like to ask the panel. Like things. Yeah, things. Yeah? yeah? Things. All right, five points for Zach. <laughs> um, all right, our next question comes from Ivan Zamboni, heir to the uh, ice cleaning fortune, <laughs> who asks, is Ivan here? Who asks, uh, true or false, we should stop exploiting playtesters and give them a cut of game revenue. Who agrees with this idea? Are we exploiting, uh, you know, there's this new thing, this sort of early access uh, trend, which people are paying money to basically be beta testers for DayZ or Rust or what have you, and what, are, what do you guys think of this? policy. I just think Sam? we should give them free pizza. Free pizza, but what if they're on the internet? What then? What say you then? Domino's? <laughs> yeah. I'll email pizza, you G -G? pizza. Okay. What do people think? This notion of like play test, especially when it's happening on a large scale, right? It's really, it can often happen on a, on a very large scale on a big project where these people are almost co-authors, right? Uh, does anybody? No? Trying to make, I'm trying to bring a thoughtful <laughs> tone. <laughs> trying to like, you know, mix things up a little bit. I, I, I like getting paid. Yeah? You like money? Yeah. Point for Saya. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty point. I'm going to give you a second answer here, Frank. This one's a, a, a serious answer. Yeah. All right, uh, I, 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 I hesitate to say whether it's exploitation or not. I think a lot of people, maybe perhaps at this table, would be uh, <laughs> at risk if we were to say it. But I do think, uh, I mean, if you look at what Jason did with the Castle Doctrine, um, the simple idea of raising the price as it goes along so that if you come in for the early beta test, mm. you get the game for half price is actually a good deal, and it doesn't seem exploitational to me at all. Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> Any other thoughts about uh, this issue of the exploitation builds character? 
I feel I'm doing my playtesters a service. How many of Eric's students are in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> By oh instrumentalizing them. <laughs> <laughs> because if it happens, if you can... <laughs> can you give that man a point? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to give Eric a pity point at this point. Please give Eric. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. I don't. You know, we, we don't need to be obsessive about the buzzers. It's fine. You guys can can. Yeah. It's, okay. <laughs> um, Taking this away. Any other um, any other feelings on this free spirited uh, exchange of ideas uh, related to this topic that I've forgotten about? Oh yes, please. Yeah, I think. Um, I think that's a great idea when we can hire an accountant for a cut of revenue, also, because that is fucking horrible. Is dealing with revenue going to multiple mm -hmm. people is very complicated. Um, I, I, but I think it would be cool if Steam set that up. Mm. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I on a more serious note, I do try and always acknowledge my playtesters. There's a very long list of playtesters in Quantum that are acknowledged, <laughs> um, and I also feel that that. Play, that collaborating with playtesters is one of the many ways that we can dethrone the sort of notion of authorship in games, if we want to, if, that, if that's an end. That mm -hmm. For me, as a game designer, when I collaborate with my playtesters, it expands my sense of self to take in ideas from the outside and, and, and try things out that come, ideas that come through my playtesters. So I'm, I always feel that every game I make is a collaboration with not just the other developers I'm working with, but with the playtesters. So, that my <coughs> exploitation comments are, are uh, meant to be ironic. So. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Just to clarify. Um, yeah, and, and I feel like, uh, well, at least in New York City, you have these communities of, of, of play tests that happen at like IBM and whatnot. And um, there's added value when you go there and you play test someone's game and then someone else can play test your game and you know you share and collaborate and, and all of that. So yeah. I mean getting paid is great, but it's also like um, it's a great privilege to be a play tester as well. I think. Yeah. Oh, I would like you to both answer simultaneously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, that, now that we've had this nice thoughtful <laughs> moment. So on the count of three, I would like to hear both <laughs> of your answers in full simultaneously. Are you ready? One Two, three. Yes. So for these kind of early access <laughs> playtesters. <laughs> uh, did I just lose? No, please. please go on. These, for these early access playtesters are currently compensated with a sort of cultural capital that the or investment in cultural capital stock that they hope will go up over time, like a Dutch tulip, which is actually totally worthless but appears to have more value than actual money. Mm -hmm. So the, the real answer to this question is to completely destroy this sort of system of cred and coolness that's sort of running things right now and replace it with something else, then it's then possible to talk about compensating playtesters. I think what Naomi is proposing is that we pay them with Steam trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, good. I'm going to uh, say five points to Naomi. And uh, three points each to Eric and Sam. Pander points, let's be honest. There you go. Um, and uh, that's point for everyone that's else. That's the only points that I'm getting. Yeah. You <laughs> are an excellent um, <laughs> All right. So uh, here's another uh, thoughtful question. Uh, Casper Gray asks, what one piece of knowledge or technology would you choose to be forgotten from the industry? Agriculture. <laughs> 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 I, I think she won. Candy. Candy. Okay. I don't have an answer, but I would like to say if you take my candy away, Colleen, I will come for you. <laughs> Any other uh, guesses on this one? I think Naomi won. It trips me out every time how long that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, patents. Patents. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, three points to <laughs> Naomi and one point to Zach. How about that? Cool. Right? <laughs> Simple, <laughs> declarative, final. Um, our next question comes from Robin Young, who asks, <laughs> why do you hate twine games? Why do you hate twine games? Mm. I might add so much. <laughs> I, I, love, I love twine games. 
Okay. Kind of a little defensive. I'm going to say negative one to say it. A little defensive. Guy claims to love them, and yet I don't see any evidence of it. Mm, so you say. All right. Is that it? Yes. Uh, because all the other panelists are afraid to answer this question? Yeah. Oh, that is your answer. Ooh. I thought that was a, oh, a prelude answer. to an answer. <laughs> because all the other panelists are afraid, I would like to step in with... No, you're just saying... Yes, Eric? I'm sorry, did you say Twine Games? Oh! Uh. <laughs> Secret point to Eric. I <laughs> Make it seem like it happened accidentally. Uh, anyone else? <laughs> Who? Okay, so seriously, though... Name some, n name some of your favorite Twine games. You, you claim to love them. What, Mustafa what Snoopy! Favorites? Mustafa Snoopy is a good one. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Kesha yep. Crystal Warrior Princess. Okay. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Other, other no. faves? Uh, conversations with my mother. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, so it's funny that Syed is the only person who didn't name <laughs> who claims to love them. I am so his head hungover like, right I now. Yeah. I, don't even, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> All right. Three points to Syed. <laughs> uh, one point to Naomi. An extra point to Eric. Uh, one for Sam. Two for Colleen. Negative one to Zach. <laughs> All right. How about that? All right. Do you want the serious answer to that question? Uh, sure, absolutely. Yep. Okay, so the reason I hate twine games is because they're actually so simple to make in the kind of naked twine model that they obscure the fact that the tool itself is extremely robust for making all kinds of experiences. So it's actually, Twine is um, oversimplifying itself uh, and staying on this kind of like ground level where we can, where lots of different kinds of um, branching choice games can be made. But the, the technology and the use of it hasn't advanced to like the 102 level, which I think could be accessible by a ton of people. Um, and maybe we'll get there soon, but um, and I'm not talking about extensions and things like that. I'm just talking about like use of variables in Twine. It's like massively untapped. So it's it's kind of a weird way to hate, but that's like my um, why Twine games aren't good enough yet. Answer. What's a what's a possible solution for that problem, Naomi? I want a little more Twine workshops. Twine 102. Yeah. <coughs> Very good. How about uh, two extra points for Naomi? Nice, nicely done. Um, all right. Our next question comes from Kyle Labont. Am I pronouncing that right? Could it be Labonte? Labonte, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that you, Kyle? A, a point for Kyle. Uh, stand up, will you? Would you like to stand up while I read your question? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Just take it away. Take it away. <laughs> Kyle says, and I'm going to try to do a Kyle imitation when I say this. <laughs> What's your favorite game you know is bad? Uh. What's your... What's your favorite game you know, you know is bad? Oh, heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. Oh. Ooh, good answer. Yeah. yeah, five points right off the bat for Sia. <laughs> That's such a strong answer. Other people can gain points. Yes. Uh, quantum. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Eric. Super Panel Fighter <laughs> <laughs> Turbo Edition. Wow. Uh, yeah, I guess seven points for Eric. I mean, fair is fair, right? Anyone else want to get on this mm -hmm. train? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would have to say the meta game. Oh, yeah. oh. Mm. Yeah. bold. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We know that. Zach. Uh, breakdown. Yeah, you haven't even heard of it. <laughs> okay, hold on. No, 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 no. Whoa. Sam, cool your jets. I want to hear a little bit more about this breakdown. game Breakdown. Breakdown? Take, take us through Breakdown. Yeah, what is it? all right. Breakdown is this Konami game that was really uh, hyped for Xbox. Mm -hmm. And it was like a first-person brawler. And as soon as it come came out, everybody shut up about it, and nobody ever played it again. But it's a really interesting game because it's one of the earlier games that was entirely in the first person and had cutscenes, and the cutscenes were in the first person. So you would like dive through a window over a helicopter and land, but the whole thing would be in first person. 
And it was really terrifying because it was a beat-em-up. So if someone kicked you and you were on the ground, you'd see the enemy's feet walking around you while you're mm. trying to get up and figure out what was going on. And it was a really interesting game and like brutally hard and stupid. Like There's like a boss fight near the end that's half an hour long. And if you fuck <laughs> up once, you die and you have to start all over again. OK, so um, that's, really that's why bad it's game. bad. No, why, why, do you, why is it your favorite bad game? Oh, because it's so bad, but also so good because it did so many things that I've never seen in video games before and still kind of haven't seen. Like the, um, all of the first person stuff was like really interesting and it started out seeming like it was just to uh, explore this first person stuff and have all of these like weird moments where you were doing very cinematic things, but then they start to fuck with your vision and what's going on and then the plot expands into this insane science fiction plot where like spoiler alert you were you were like went through this whole facility but it was like an ai training exercise because you were actually unconscious and then you're brought back t to consciousness and then you have to go through the same facility again and deal with these aliens but you're actually on a planet and you're not in a thing on earth and it just gets crazier <laughs> and crazier and crazier and crazier and like all with this strange like first person like stuff. It, it kind of did a lot of stuff that like um, Eternal Darkness, is that what it's called? There mm -hmm. was like a game, yeah. So it did some stuff similar to that, but in the idea of it being first person instead of like third person um, and video gaming. It was a really bizarre game. Anyone else have any stories like that? That was an awesome oh, story. No, I don't have any good stories. <laughs> Anyone else have any good stories? Cool story, bro. <laughs> I like that. No, that's, I think that's exactly, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Can I get another, anyone else have any experiences like that? I certainly have feelings of, like strong, like Earth Defense Force is a game like that. Heavy well, Rain is kind of like, Heavy Rain's not like that because it's not craptastic, you know what I mean? What you're describing yeah. is this thing that's craptastic and oh, yet you sort of like, bad. it connects with you on a, on, a, yeah. on a deep level. Oh no, I think, I'd, I'd Heavy, Rain is, Heavy Rain is incredibly Heavy Rain is like weirdly slick though, right? I mean it's. Well, I don't know. If you consider like trying to shave with a, a, with a PS3 move controller incredibly slick. I, I, like the mechanics, <laughs> my, <laughs> the mechanics in that game were just such complete bullshit. My like favorite it, part of that. You had to press X to Jason. Like, what my, that? I thought the best part of that whole game was when they make you fold the little origami crane during the installation sequence. <laughs> yeah. I thought that yeah. was That's fucking really brilliant. brilliant. That yeah. And best nothing best. ever led up to that. And I've never <laughs> seen a game that like nothing was better than the installation sequence. <laughs> I think that is like phenomenal. I think the best part of that game is when they're teaching you how the combat works and you're in the backyard with your children. <laughs> and at a certain point you realize, oh, I, I can't go forward until I lose. Like I've mastered this way of like blocking and attacking. But as long as I keep successfully blocking and attacking, the, the scene never ends. And I realize, oh, I need to not because I'm playing with kids. Mm. And that's how, and then that, that to me was like, I don't think the, the rest of the game lived up to that. But right. that moment of like using mechanics expressively, like knowingly, self-referentially, it was so so clever and 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 kind of touching too, right? I mean, that that was my favorite moment. Me, um, me and Kunal uh, would have about meetings about baby castles uh, over heavy rain, but we'd only play it when it was raining. So mm. so we would heavy. look at the weather, wow. yeah, and then we were like, oh shit, it's raining. We have to meet. And, and we'd have to find <laughs> heavy rain, put it on, nice. start playing it, and then wow. talk about baby castles. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, Eric. No, I forgot there were buzzers. <laughs> <laughs> Point for Eric. I have a. I, I would. The game that I would put in this category for me, is, for very different reasons, is probably Puzzle Quest. Uh, that mm. that that DS game, Match Three mm -hmm. mechanic, where you're building up resources. It was one of the first of the using these uh, bejeweled style mechanics in order to do this very very long quest oriented game. And um, I think I think um, uh, that game is extremely repetitive. And I, I think it was you, Frank, that described it very well, my experience oh. of playing the game, which was um, <laughs> by, by the end points. of that game, you're grinding, yeah, exactly, more oh. points for me. You're ready for some <laughs> yeah, here we go. points. By the end of that game, you're grinding through this sort of level after level, and it just feels like when you're at the bottom of the big bag of potato chips, and you know that you are sick to your stomach, you shouldn't eat anymore, your <laughs> fingers are greasy, but you're just sort of saying, oh God, I hate myself. Just getting those last chips out of the back. So Animated <laughs> GIF, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that, so that, but, but that, but that game kind of captures one's desire. Yes, that way, so. I love I it. I just, just, I wanted to compete with Eric for a little bit. Who um, doesn't? Nice. Uh, 
<laughs> Mass Effect 3, which is not a good game, but I did think the best part of Mass Effect 3 was when Frank tweeted that the best ending to Mass Effect 3 was that they had to redo the ending because the fans were complaining. Oh, that's true. That was so clever. Oh, man, I'm so good at Twitter. Okay. So, uh, pander point for Zach, pander point for Eric, uh, five points for Zach, three for Syed, and that's it. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm giving out that round. Excellent round. That's my favorite round so far, I think. Uh, point for everyone. <laughs> because I like that round so much. All right. Um, Merit Kopas asks, how do I defeat the skeleton on level 12? Oh, a point of order. Excuse me. Let's just lock Naomi's uh, buzzer in and we'll go her, her first. But first, a point of order from the scorekeeping table. Yes, of course. <laughs> Kyle, stand up again. <laughs> oh, he refuses. Okay. Naomi, how do I defeat the skeleton on level 12? The skeleton on level 12 is actually a manifestation of your own guilt about playing the game, so the only way to defeat the skeleton is to not play the game in the first place. Wrong. Anyone else? <laughs> yes. You just need the candle, Frank. You just need the candle. Wrong. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, you need a sword with holy, or you need to kill the necromancers first so they don't respawn the skeletons. Correct. <laughs> so negative one for Naomi, negative one for Sam, and one for Zach. Um, this next question comes from Sticknork, who's uh, no relation to me. And he asks, how many Final Fantasy characters can Frank name? So we're going to start. Oh. Let's do this. Let's start high, and we'll just, you guys can bid down. The final, the person is winning. So, you, you'll bid with your buzzers. Let's start at, at 12. And who's willing to take the under on 12? Buzz in if you think less than 12. Okay. Uh, who's willing to, oh, yeah. to say 10? <laughs> Buzz in if you're willing to say 10. Less than 10. Less than 10 or less. Oh. Okay. Seven. Uh, six. Five. Four. Three. I'm standing right here, Syed. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do, so no one else buzzed. Syed thinks I can, can't even name three. So I'm gonna name three and then we're gonna give him negative 10 points, all right? Uh, Eris, Sephiroth, and, Cl and Cloud Strife, which I was just told <laughs> earlier before the panel began. So that's three. Negative 10 for Syed, and I'm ashamed of you and me. <laughs> and Sticknork. All right. Our next question, we're gonna answer, we're gonna answer uh, two more questions, and then we're gonna open it up to the audience for a lightning round, where Kyle is going to stand up. <laughs> and we're just gonna make fun and of him. And be struck by lightning. Yeah. Um, all right. The next question comes from uh, Robert Yong. <laughs> who I believe was named after Yonge Street in Toronto. Is Robert here? Were you born on Yonge Street? Or is that? No. It's a coincidence, apparently. And Robert asks, <laughs> which is the best Pikachu? <laughs> okay, Sam, pretty quick on the buzzer. Sam's like, oh, I know, I got this. The, the best Pikachu? Yes. It's the first Pikachu. Hmm. Gentle, tender, nostalgic, yes. The best Pikachu is a Pikachu you don't see coming. Oh, whoa. Whoa. I like that. <clears throat> Anyone else with a with a uh, with a guess? Naomi, does your buzzer still work? <laughs> <laughs> this question's got your name written all over it. You love Pikachu, don't you? <laughs> Colleen, no, nobody. P Pikachu? Is that a Pikachu? <laughs> How about this? <laughs> Who can do the best Pikachu? How about let's twist it up like that? Pikachu. Oh. 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 Okay, that's pretty good. Anyone else want to? Pretty good. <laughs> All right. Pika, pika. Yeah. Five for Naomi. Two for Eric. Minus one for Sam for the early buzz in. I just think that was way too early. It's like a Albert Chu over here, right? Is that the guy's name? Who's on the Jeopardy? Who's the super good Jeopardy player? Stay with me, people. Albert Chu. Um, all right. Uh, Charlie Miller. Am I pronouncing that right? Charlie Miller <laughs> asks, what's a game that doesn't exist that you hope to be able to play before you die? A super puzzle, uh, Super Panel Fighter 3. <laughs> <laughs> What's a game that 
game that doesn't exist that you hope to be able to play. Yeah. The Olympic sport that I design. <laughs> oh. Wow. That's my actually my honest answer. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Sam. Richard the Third. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes, I had. Heavy rain too. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen? The metagame. Oh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> that was such a sad little half buzz. Point for Zach. Just a great pity point for that half buzz. Anyone else? No? Zach, you don't want to? Mm. Nah. Chess three. Chess three. <laughs> David Serlin joke. Is David here? No. Um, all right, I'm gonna say Syed gets three, Colleen gets seven, uh, Zach gets one, and Eric gets four. And Sam gets two. And Naomi gets one. <laughs> this is harder than it looks. Um, all right, so first of all, do we have any last minute uh, questions from Twitter that we think that, I'm gonna defer to the uh, to the, the scorekeepers who are, who are there, they're still, they're still coming in on Twitter. We wanna make sure that we get some last minute questions in. Then we're gonna open it up uh, for, the, uh, for the live action audience round. I have one that I tore up. <laughs> I think we're good? Okay, so let's, let's shift gears uh, and, and enter the uh, lightning round. Everyone hit your buzzers at once. That's the sign for the lightning round. So hopefully uh, the uh, live audience has been uh, thinking about uh, possible questions to ask. Please raise your hand if you have a question for the contestants. Yes, in the, in the light blue shirt. It's kind of a surge color, I guess. Yes, that's you. Stand up. Okay. How roguelike is too roguelike? <laughs> How roguelike is too roguelike? Lightning round, buzz in, go. <laughs> Up, wow. up, down, down, left. Okay. <laughs> yes. Anything no. with hit points. <laughs> Anything with hit points is too roguelike. There are some roguelikes without hit points, right? Yeah, but they're not too roguelike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyone else? Two points for Naomi. <laughs> Next question. Yes, you, sir. Oh, what does the fox say? Lightning round, buzz in. Sam. Meow. Colleen. <laughs> Eric. The fox remains silent. <laughs> Naomi. Uh, chaos reigns. Oh, yeah, that's right. Three points for Naomi. <laughs> oh, and a shudder, like a shudder point. <laughs> um, next question, all the way in the back. Yes. When will Valve learn how to count to three? Who cares? Don't care. <laughs> buzz in. Lightning round. Sam, you buzzed, right? I Why didn't, but when will listen? Gabe Newell be president? Wow, okay. Anyone else? I'm going to say no points for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Lightning round. Yes, you. Ah. What's the title of the game in which you are the protagonist? Dysphoria. Dysphoria, very nice. Well, well let's, wait till your buzzer ends before you buzz it. Don't make the mistake Zach's made. So hit it again. Wait all the way. Go ahead and get a sandwich. Okay, now. Candy eating saga? Oh. God likes candy, Syed. Heavy rain. <laughs> all right. Two points each. For Naomi and Syed, late buzzer, <laughs> negative one point for Eric. <laughs> now, Eric, you need to answer, and then if I like your answer, I'm going to give you a lot of points, and if I dislike it, I'm going to penalize you for the late buzz. Go ahead. Super Battle Fighter 2. <laughs> 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 Frank Lance is the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, obviously. We flipped over in panda points. We've, we've, this, we've gone all the oh. way around. Well, What's it called in math when you go around? It's like modulo or something. I'm going to say negative seven. Wait, can take I all the panda points can I, can away. Can I change my uh, answer to drop seven? 
And negative seven for Syed. <laughs> you heard what I just said about pander points flipping yeah, around. But it's, but negative seven. Something All right, <laughs> uh, lightning round. Next question from the audience. Kyle, I'm looking at you. Anything? You got anything for us? Nothing? Okay. Okay, Kyle, Kyle. Wow. <laughs> okay. Panelists, buzz in. What is Kyle thinking of off the top of his head? What is Kyle thinking of? I think Kyle's wishing that Frank would stop talking to him. <laughs> point for Sam and a point for Kyle. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, which panelist has the highest flappy bird score? Oh. Buzz in if you think you have the highest flappy bird score. Say your score. 53. Whoa. Oh, I was going to say, I think Frank Lance sorry. has the highest Flappy Bird score. Oh, if Eric is right, uh, oh. then Eric, he'll get uh, 10 points. So who we, else? We know Frank has that. Oh, yes. Well, we don't. Yes, we I don't. Anyone want to compete? You say 53. I think you had higher than 53. And anyone else want to compete? I'll Eddie. also give you a point if, you're, if you can beat 53. I'm, be I'm betting on Zach. I think okay. you were in the 70s. Okay. I have the I lowest Flappy Bird score. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't count. All right, so I'm going to say... One point for Zach for having the highest score on the panel. Mm. Ten points for Eric for correctly judging that I have the highest score. Uh, and one point for Naomi for glomming. Just a glom point. <laughs> what, what, right? is, what was your score? Uh, I think it's like 66 or something. So it's 66. 66. <laughs> no, no, it's 60. Oh. It's in the 60s. It's in the 60s. Oh, Andy Nealon. You Points for any yeah, yeah. Um, All right, lightning round. Questions from the audience. Yes, uh, yes, all the way in the back, and then we'll, we'll come up here. All the way now, yes. What genre are you? What genre are you? <laughs> Buzz it in. Roguelike. Point for Sam. Lightning round. Question. Yes. How many friendships have you lost through playing Monopoly? How many Monopoly friendships have you lost? I don't have any friends. Oh. oh. Two points for Eric. <laughs> lightning that is round. My honest answer. Yes. Okay, here's a serious, thoughtful question. Buzz in on the question, why does Gone Home make people so angry? Uh, it violates the expected contract between uh, game and player in which uh, entitled players assume that they're going to be put into a position where they get to act as the prime mover and decider of a game and robs them of that sovereignty and instead grants it to a fictional character. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got nothing funny to say about that. <laughs> a good answer. Six points for Naomi, and nice. a kind of one point for Sam for 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 having buzzed in but not having answered. Well, I, right. I can answer, but it's yeah. not as good. Yeah, fair enough. Man uh, knows his limits. Anyone else? No, Zach no other thoughts. Nothing. <laughs> Just a blank slate. Whatever. I guess we can go. No, Zach, go ahead, please. Um, I actually think Gone Home hits the same problem that a lot of art and media hits, and it's the same reason a lot of people don't like art. And it's people want to feel an ownership over media, and when they have media that they don't entirely understand, because it's not like media that they previously had, they get upset and they rebel against the media, even though what they should be doing is being excited about something new to understand. Right. Yes, Eric. Strong reactions are good, whether they're positive or negative. Right? Indifference, no, indifference is what we want to avoid. If people get are angry about Gone Home, why is that bad? That seems like a like a in the big picture of things a a, a good a good kind of response to get as a creator of something. Is that an answer to the question? Well, it's okay. It's okay, just to voice your opinion, no matter how wrong it is. It's good. It's an open exchange of ideas. There is no right or wrong except for that answer. It's all just a sharing of offensive and, and, uh, and terrifying things. So anyone else, uh, well, that's a, that's, I, I, are people, it, here's a question, like, are people as mad about Gone Home as, it, as, as they think? I mean, I see a lot of like second and third level discussion, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know, like where are people going to get angry? Is it in the comment section of, uh, of <laughs> comment? Is it, is it people saying nasty things to, to, uh, to Steve Gaynor on, on Twitter? Is it, you know what I mean? Like, where, where is the, 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 the backlash to Gone Home? I don't see the backlash. I hear about the anger about the backlash, and I assume I, that there's yeah. tons it's of backlash. Where, where is it Steve, Steam up? tags. Yeah. Steve Gaynor went out for a drink last night. He had to wait a long time for the bartender to notice him. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Did he, he should have gone home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Point for negative me. Can I get a point? point for Frank. Ne the negative a, 100 points for Frank. Point. Thank you very much. Nice. All right. 
I'm, it's actually mostly I, people being mad about the, the the price per gameplay hours delivered equation, and and, and they're like angry Steam um, uh, reviews. Is that where it is? Yeah, Steam reviews and, and like yeah. forum comments, Kotaku posters. But it's it's mostly about like this didn't give me enough value for the money since we're still operating on this idea that like the the best games give you more time, like right. suck up more of your time. And right. now it's a quarter to three uh, review scale. Yeah. It's like pretty abundantly clear that kids don't go to movies anymore. I, I, I feel like this, same price this, this panel is manufacturing, and the question is manufacturing why people are angry. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't think people are angry. Yeah, I, I kind of been with I think this is I think made there's up. a lot of love, and then there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of trolling. It's like, yeah, a, yeah there, there's a lot of yeah, weird, yeah. hostile, you know, uh, terrible, toxic junk on the internet. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, we, we have to find a way to, 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 to avoid it uh, because uh, it's nasty stuff, you know? Um, all right, one last uh, lightning round question, and then, uh, yes? Did you vlog all of your days Patriots? Did you hear about Ellen Page? Yes. How about a hand for Ellen Page? Woo! <laughs> really nice speech. Yeah. Kind of a yeah. beautiful. Yep. Yep. Did you guys hear about, yep. is that the I question, not. yes or no? Yes. 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 No. Yes. No. yes. Okay. Six points for everyone who heard it. Raise your hand if you heard about it. Six points for people who heard about it. Raise your hand if you didn't hear about it. What does that tell you right there? Come on. I've been putting on a festival this week. Yeah. Okay. Six points for Sam, too. Whether you heard about it or not, it's a wonderful thing. Um, all right. Now let's uh, turn it over to our scorekeepers to calculate uh, all of the points that have been earned, lost, given away, stolen. And, um, and then we're going to find out. We're going to give you uh, the rankings uh, from the bottom up. We're going to start with the person who came in last place. Now remember, there's a lot at stake here because Colleen bet it all. Yeah. Um, 100 plus and or minus. Albert Chu style, she said, if I win, I'm going to win big. And if I lose, I'm just going to go out it. in a blaze of glory. So 100 points. Blame me out. So we'll, we'll, like without, yeah. So I don't even know how that works. Because if she does win, she wins. And if she loses, she loses. It's like, a, she, like, like I'm not that. sure how that works. Yeah, so actually. It was one of our questions, actually. How does that work? So, and uh, uh, the scorekeepers, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Do we have any corporate sponsors? <laughs> the, yeah, who made the, the buzzers? buzzers. Uh, learning resources. Learning yeah. resources uh, for all your buzzer needs. Yeah. Woo! Just buzz into learningresources.buzz, I believe it's the website. And uh, what <laughs> so are we, much math. What, Frank, what does the winner win? Oh, is there oh. a prize? Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, is there a prize for the, for the big winner? It's an intrinsic reward. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How good for the loser? Steam okay, here we go. Steam and Steam. now I would like to give you, uh, starting with at the very bottom of the scale, <laughs> she bet it all. She bet it all. <laughs> Didn't work out. She almost made it yeah. at negative 75. Colleen Macklin. Thank you. Thank you. Colleen, the queer yeah. art of failure, Macklin. The next lowest score is me no with one point. <laughs> Then after that, Kyle with three points. Put your hands yeah. together for Kyle. Thank you very much. After Kyle, we have Syed with 13.5. Whoa. That's a decimals or something. Next feet, after sorry. Syed, we have Sam with 20 points. Put your hands together for Sam nice. Roberts. Nice. In third place, with a score of 27 points, is Eric Zimmerman. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Zimmerman. And now, Bronze. in second place, oh serving as the runner-up in case tonight's winner is unable to uh, lead their uh, whatever responsibilities they have. So I think buying me a round of drinks. In second place, Zach Gage with 31 points. That means our big winner is Woo! Naomi Clark with 46 Woo! points. Naomi, victory round. Naomi is the big winner. Oh, panel Fighter yeah. 2 Turbo <laughs> HD Remix. Can I, can I, is there a doctor? And I'd like to thank all of our panelists. Big hand, round of applause. Thank Frank you Lance, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Lance. Frank Lance. Frank Lance. Big round can I get some more pander points? Thank you, that? Kyle.